Well, if anyone was taking bets, I'm ill again. This is great. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to my floor. It's where I belong. Yes, good things. Um, am I even recording? Hello friends, let's try that one more time. We are on the floor. We are very low energy right now. We are... I'm basically just filming this so it's not a ridiculously long amount of time between videos. I have not put the lighting up. I'm using the camera audio. I don't care at this point. Ah. Uh. <laughs> but, really quick update. The orange bustle dress, in progress. Partially done? Partially. I'm gonna go with partially. The cathedral dress, basically finished. Part two coming soon. Mystery other project, which just took over my life for the last two weeks. Also nearly done. That video coming very very soon. It just needs one more bit and then to be edited. The second post Halloween project of the series started. We're gonna go with started and I'm actually nearly finished. Nearly finished. At last with the patchwork coat for the fragile, so only, you know, a year and a half after I announced the project, we're finally gonna get those videos in the next couple of months. Or we are if I get my hack together and stop being so tired all of the time. But you are not here for any of those things. You are here probably because the Foundations Revealed competition voting just went up. At this point, I have been entirely selfish and just looked through my category and ha 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 gosh, people are talented. And there's also me. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the Pequod dress. Why I have a lot of feelings about how that went down. This is unfortunately going to be a very much a me talking video rather than making of footage because I didn't film this. I was in much too much of a hurry. To film this. Nothing I can do about that now. But I will have lots of close-up footage, hopefully, as I talk. So, general overview. So the book I chose was Moby Dick. Uh, <laughs> basically because it was the only book I read in 2020. <sighs> Am I gonna tell this story? I guess so. Back last summer I started playing a tabletop role-playing game with some of my friends. It was great. We're actually still going and having a wonderful time. If by wonderful you mean we murdered our friends and everything is suffering. Which is like role-playing equivalent of we're having a wonderful time. We were in the position where my character was trying to give a cute boy his number in the middle of like a big dramatic scene or whatever. Said cute boy was like, call me Pequod, and I was like, what? And then someone else piped up and was like, oh, it's the ship from Moby Dick. I had never read Moby Dick. Long story short, in order that I could be more specifically mean to a made up character, I ended up listening to the full audiobook recording of Moby Dick. I have my priorities straight. So when the Foundations Reveal competition got announced, I was like, the only book I've read is Moby Dick. It would be a bit of a reach. I'd have to probably reread anything else if I was going to go back. And then I thought about how it would be the 1850s, which is pretty sweet, and I had the idea of the ocean layers on the tiers of the skirt. One thing led to another, and the next thing I know, I was painting an entire dress. As a basis, I used the 1852. Don't quote me on that, I don't have the book to hand. Pattern from Janet Arnold. I don't recommend it. I had a lot of trouble with this pattern. Maybe if you were just trying to reproduce it exactly as it is in the book, it would be okay. But I wasn't. I can't in good faith tell anyone that they should try, because I had so many problems with it. But anyway, the fabric I used was calico, partially because it was very cheap and I needed 10 meters of it. Depending on where you are, calico might mean like canvas to you. Here it is not quite that heavy. It is moderately stiff cotton broadcloth. It's not actually canvas. I thought I was going to need something with a little bit more body than the very lightweight cotton I normally get for mock-ups and linings and stuff. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> it took the paint very well, which I don't know if the sheet weight cotton that I normally get would have. It's a bit stiff. I just used regular bog standard acrylic paint. So when it comes to painting fabric, one thing you have to bear in mind is that 
if you let it the paint will sit on top of the fabric and then just like flake off. The way you get around that in my experience is that you first of all pick a fabric that the paint can kind of soak through and secondly you water down your acrylics so that they are sufficiently liquid that they will soak into the fibres themselves. Then you end up with a moderately flexible but pretty durable layer of paint and it still kind of behaves like fabric. Emphasis on the kind of. We will start with the foundation of this dress because you can't see it in anything other than a couple of seconds of the video but I made a corset. Well I say I made a corset, I got as far as a wearable mock-up of a corset and then I was out of time so this is just what we rolled with. This is literally just basic calico and zip ties, it is sewn really quite badly. It is also covered in cat hair so that's nice. I used a pattern out of corsets and crinolines. Now my copy of corsets and crinolines is not the current version, it's the yellow cover, it was the slightly older one. When you need to reprint a book and you don't have the original typeset of that book anymore, the way you do that is basically a very very fancy photocopy. And I think that is how the yellow cover corsets and crinolines was done because that's the only way to explain why all the scales are weird and don't match up with any actual rulers. So that was exciting. I believe that has been resolved for the new edition but I don't use it enough to want to buy it again so we worked with what we had. So I scaled up the pattern to my size but keeping the original proportions and then in terms of fitting I basically just took in the bust portion until it fits the fact that I am very very flat at least compared to standard Victorian corset wearers. It's a nice short corset, it's got some nice hip flare. It's a nice enough fit that I might actually go and, you know, use a basque and make a corset out of this. But this itself, it did the job. It is not going to win any awards, but there was no way I was waiting in this work with no corset underneath and I didn't really want to use a modern one. Equally, this dress was supposed to be from the 1850s. I should have had, if not a hoop crinoline. I think there's some ambiguity over whether a cage crinoline is appropriate for this dress or not. Certainly I should have had, if not a crinoline, then a ton of petticoats. I had one. There was no time and no fabric. So the undergarments weren't ideal, but we will move on from these to the dress itself. Let's talk about the skirt because the skirt actually went quite well. The skirt panels I used the proportions from the Janet Arnold pattern exactly as is. Each ruffle tier got sewn into a loop, hemmed and then painted flat. The idea is that the skirt is the ocean. The lowest tier is very very dark and at the very top of it there are some small whales. They're not small, they're a long way down. The tier above is kind of the middle ocean so this has some fish which are just done very simply in a silver metallic acrylic. Some bigger whales kind of in the middle space and then the top tier leading into the body of the skirt itself has the surface of the water picked out as a foaming edge and then I just sketched some lines across in white and grey and silver to give the suggestion of the top of waves. The order of operations was basically I painted each of the tiers individually. Then I marked out where I was going to attach them onto the skirt, which I'd already sewed up into a, a complete circle. Basically each component was joined into a circle and hemmed and then I started fussing around with gathering and joining them together. So the ruffles themselves are corded gathers, that's where you fold the top of the ruffle over a piece of cord, or in my case yarn, and you sew a channel pulling the cord as you go so it gathers up. It's a pretty neat technique and based on the description in Janet Arnold that I thought was what had been used on the original so that was what I did. I originally planned to attach the ruffles by hand and I got three stitches in, realised what sewing through that extent of painted canvas was going to feel like so I stuck it under the machine and as a result it's kind of messy but it's okay. Once they were all attached I then painted over the top edge of the ruffle and a couple of inches up the skirt for the lower two 
just to blend everything in together and make sure that you couldn't see big swathes of natural coloured calico. For the top portion of the skirt I gathered it into the waistband before I painted it. The top of the skirt is cartridge pleated. Honestly cartridge pleating is, in my opinion, the easiest thing in the world and we were fairly down to the wire by that point so I was quite pleased at how easily that went together. After I gathered everything up I then painted it and did the detailing on the waistband so Moby Dick himself is on the waistband of the skirt. I decided to do this basically because A I wanted him to be very hidden. You get a long way through the book without ever seeing Moby Dick and thus I wanted him to be on the dress but really hard to find. The other reason the white whale is on the waistband is because I had painted so many whales by that point that I really didn't want to paint another whale. It's really hard to find reference images for sperm whales because not that many people have photographed sperm whales swimming happily. It was a challenge. The keen-eyed among you will notice that there is not a hook and eye on this waistband. That's because I didn't add one because I ran out of time. I just pinned it on me. And the bottom hem of the skirt under the lowest ruffle is painted in a very dark reddish brown. My original plan for that and for the inside of the sleeves was mottled reddish brown with some brighter red in it. Basically just because the book is incredibly gory. Like incredibly gory. There's so much whale murder. It didn't really have time but the dark reddish brown kind of faded into the background quite nicely. It's not obvious so I'm okay with it the way it is would quite like to go back and bring out the other colours that I wanted out of that reddish brown. It's okay. It's not amazing. It's okay. Contrary to what was in my How Not To Make A Foundations Revealed competition entry video, you can iron this. You have to be careful because acrylic paint is essentially plastic from the back side of the fabric and at a low temperature and with a pressing cloth it's fine, you, you can iron this. I find it also helps set the paint into the fibres if you do iron it. Did I have time to iron it before I put it on to take the photos? No. Should I have waited until just before taking the photos to put it on and not, you know, sat down while waiting for my partner to show up with the camera? Yes, because as you can see in the photos, it's all crumpled up the back. That wasn't ideal. We were literally taking photos 45 minutes before the deadline for submission and the dress was still wet. So that just happened the way it happened. The original plan incidentally was to take photos outside and to get footage. They've been draining the reservoir near where I live and it's got these beautiful pebbled beaches now leading down into it because the water level's so low. I was like, great, I can fake being by the seaside because we're not by the seaside at all, but I could pretend. And then we had eight inches of snow. Oh, okay, let's talk about the bodice. The bodice was a nightmare. Bodice was an absolute unmitigated, I'm really not happy with it. Okay, where, where, where do we start? I probably shouldn't have tried to use the pattern that I used because I was going to change it a lot and also that pattern is a nightmare. I used the under bodice pattern to start off with and that turned out okay. Like it wasn't amazing, but it was okay. So I put the under bodice together and it fit and then I tried to make an outer bodice, I guess, pattern. The original bodice was back closing and had big fanned gathers all across the front and all across the back. I did not want big fanned gathers and I wanted a front closure because I had plans for the back of the bodice, right? I think I went through four mock-ups before I gave up. I tried to use the pattern as it is, I tried to use the pattern adjusted, I tried to use the under bodice as a base and expand from there. I tried to drape on me. I don't have a dress form, which makes draping a, a, an exciting prospect. None of these worked. Absolutely none of them worked. In the end, I went and drafted on paper a shape that I thought would work. Looking at the Victorian dressmaker and looking at 
a big commercial butterick pattern or something of a, of a Civil War era gown. The result is okay. I'm gonna go with the result is okay. The underbodice shows at the bottom. I don't like that. I should have made the outer longer or used less of a seam allowance when attaching the piping. The sleeves I think could have been a little longer. The sleeves I used pretty much as they were from Janet Arnold. Again, forgetting that I have really long arms, so I should have made them a bit longer. I didn't. The underbodice closes with hook and eye tape, and then the outer bodice comes up like two inches higher to the, the base of my neck, and I put one hook and eye there to hold it shut. Should have done more. It needs more to close that gap. That gap was awkward. Without the collar pinned on top, it looks like garbage. I am quite pleased with the piping. I do wish that I'd had proper piping cord instead of some random leftover yarn that I had lying around. That would have been nice. Yes, the neck, the bottom and all the armholes are piped and I think it looks beautiful. Most of this was hand sewn. The underbodice was sewn by machine, the sleeves were hemmed by machine, the lining was turned in so that it was enclosed edge at the bottom. Other than that, all the piping was put in by hand, the sleeves were put in by hand, back shaping and the darts, question mark. I ended up, because I am so much flatter than women's patterns expect, I find that I can't just do regular darts sometimes, not unless I've really thought about it. And I had not really thought about this and I was down to the wire. So we've, I've got kind of like a weird dart running up towards the armholes, which kind of echoes the fan shape of the original bodice. I guess I could make that argument. We all know it's a lie. Yeah, so an awful lot of this was done by hand and I am really pleased about that. And I am also really quite happy with how the painting came out. The sunset was not as sunset as I wanted, but it's okay. I'm quite, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. The clouds are great, but clouds are the easiest thing in the world to paint. You just kind of go all Bob Ross with your paintbrush and, and you have clouds. I do wish I'd made the ship itself a little bit bigger because I'd have been able to get more detail in if it was a little bit larger. Having said that, I couldn't have made it much bigger and still fit it between the two side back seams. So it's a little bit six of one, half a dozen of the other. The ship was based on a woodcut in the Nantucket Museum of Whaling. So that is a whaling ship that I have attempted to reproduce. It's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not mad about it. As boats go, I think it's all right. I simultaneously feel like I overdid it and underdid it with the rigging, but such is the nature of rigging, the, like actual ships are a nightmare to paint because there are so many ropes. So this is the cap that I made, partially because the book Moby Dick makes frequent reference to the fact that many of the people in Nantucket are Quakers, and indeed the owners of the Pequod are Quakers. So I had a look at mid-century American Quaker women and they all seemed to cover their hair. As you can tell, Victorian hairstyles are a challenge for me, so <laughs> I basically went, okay, well, we'll make a cap. That solves that problem. Uh, if I was going to make this again, I would make the brim narrower. I would also make the space across the back of the neck smaller. I meant to attach ribbons to these little tabs. I did not do that thing because I ran out of time. It's cotton organdy on the outer and then the lining is silk. I don't know what kind of silk. It's just a silk scrap I had lying around. Because my hair is so bleached, it can be a little breakable. It will be in luck if it's not actually currently sticking directly upright. Anyway, yes, so we will now talk about the engagements. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. I'm probably not, because I don't speak French. These guys are done in two layers of two different muslins, which I embroidered, and then there's a layer of silk as a lining. They have acrylic on them now, because the inside of the sleeves was still wet. If you're wondering how I attached them to the dress, I pinned them on, because I'm like that, apparently. Again, I would like to go back and just add a ribbon, and then a ribbon to the inside of the sleeves, so I can tie them into place instead. The pins were okay, I actually, I would have worn it, with the sewing pins in, it just it wasn't the most elegant of solutions. 
There's three lines of brown stitching which are done in double chain stitch which is a pain in the neck. I'm never using that again. The three lines are supposed to mimic the three masts of the Pequod and then there's single chain stitch lines fanning out from that which is supposed to look like rigging and then I just lined them in silk and gathered them into a very simple wristband. I used the proportions from the Victorian Dressmaker by Isabella Pitcher. They came out pretty big and a little bit short which I can understand because I have very long very spindly arms so in hindsight probably should have accommodated for that and done some actual measuring but I didn't so here we are so yes if I was going to do it again I probably I'd probably keep the width because I like them being that full but I would make them longer because just I have really long arms as it turns out final thoughts this was certainly a learning experience that's the polite way of saying it, it was kind of a mess did I misjudge time productivity levels and you know drying of paint because there's a global pandemic on and I have no idea what I'm doing with my life yeah probably while there are some things that I would have liked to have done differently and I would like to have been you know less stressed about the whole thing this dress is to me the most 2020 thing that I think I could have produced it's resonating with a story about loneliness isolation being at the mercy of a greater power it's weird and whimsical it's not at all what I expected to make I think it's probably also not at all what most people expected to see I am really pleased with it I have many things that I would like to change I have many things that I would like to do differently I would still very much like to do the big cinematic trailer that I envisioned you know walking along the water reading out some of the less racist parts of the book not gonna lie Moby Dick has a lot of very problematic elements starting with the whale murder but I digress I'm really grateful for the opportunity to participate in the competition I wish that I had planned my time better so that I was submitting more than 10 minutes before the deadline but even with all the things that I can now pick apart as being wrong with this project I think it really showcases what I can do as a costume maker yes you will get historically accurate elements but at the same time they're never going to be in quite the style or configuration that you expect and I think that is very much my brand is producing things that draw heavily on historic elements but aren't in themselves historical reconstructions and if this gives me an opportunity to connect with a whole bunch of other people who like thinking about costume in that way and who like using history as a springboard for creativity I think this will have been a really worthwhile project as I said at the beginning many more videos coming soon currently a little bit delayed because I am ill everything is on fire I hope that if you like this kind of project if you like the other things that are on the channel you're going to stick around I make no promises about when I'm going to upload but there will be videos oh and before I forget there will be a link to my coffee page in the description box I don't have anything clever to say about that but if you liked this project this video any other videos that I've teased as forthcoming chuck me a couple of quid your financial assistance really does help the channel grow and helps me invest in better kit and more projects not to mention time to do those projects in oh and if you have any questions about any of the techniques that I've described or the project itself leave them in the comments I'm never certain whether where I've explained things well enough or people are still confused and they're too polite to say anything so comment section is open Get, go forth talk to me I'm a real human I promise not three raccoons in a trench coat this is getting out of hand means that I should probably leave thank you all for watching happy voting see you next time typeset of that book anymore oh no is my cat okay he's probably fine and you don't have the original typeset of that book anymore yes I'm filming <laughs> still here on the phone no I will go away and make